Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the concept of issues in portability and interoperability. Guys, in, uh, along, with these issues, we'll be discussing some scenarios in the next lectures, guys. So don't worry about that. So for now, let us just go through one major issue that is a vendor lock-in, guys. So the concept of vendor lock-in says this, guys. So assume that you started your business in a small cloud provider. Okay, so he is uh, using uh, some uh, format, uh, formatting of a uh, storage and all things. He is using some standards. Okay, so after few years, uh, your business uh, started growing slowly, and this uh, cloud service provider is int giving you the best. So basically, you want to upgrade or you want to change from this cloud provider to some other cloud provider who is the best nowadays. Okay, so in that way, if you want to shift. Uh, if you are not able to shift, that concept is nothing but vendor lock-in, guys. Okay. So in simple words, if his standards are different and this guy's standards are different, then you are indirectly vendor locked. So basically, when if you are not vendor locked, you can transfer your application within a day or within some amount of time as per the standards. So after that, you can directly run your program without even a single issue. Then you can say that there is no vendor locking. If there are issues like you need to change some code, you need to change the file structure, you need to change the formattings. If they are there, indirectly you went across a vendor lock. Got it? Yes. So vendor lock is a concept where you are prevented to move your application to another vendor or to an open source. Okay. So vendor locking is a bad concept you can say guys because we don't want vendor locking concept. Right? Yes. Similarly, in simple words, they say portability between two vendors. Okay. So now you might be saying that, okay, so vendor locking, how it will be making problems. So basically, if a vendor lock occurs, you are forced to rebuild your application, right? So you need to change some some of your code, right? In your application, yes. Similarly, network configurations should be remade if there are any network issues. Similarly, setting up security. So if their standards of security are different and these guys' standards are different and you want these standards only, at that time, you need to configure yourself. Similarly, managing the application, running whether all the functionalities are working properly. So... You previously tested on this service, but again on this service, you need to hire some testers and you need to test the service whether it is working efficiently or not. Because if it is not working efficiently, what is the use of your application, right? Yes. So all the functionalities and everything should be checked properly. Okay. Similarly, data movement and all also should be taken care. So basically, most of these will be standards, guys. So basically, they will be using SQL something, some versions, and they'll be using the same versions. Okay. So in that way, most of the time, they will be same. But whenever there are some upgrades, few service providers will upgrade too late guys few service providers will upgrade instantly like if a version comes they will upgrade immediately and they will change the things so at that time you are indirectly locked here right so you can't move there move at that time so in that way also we get some problems okay yes okay so i hope everyone got some basic idea on this so in the next lecture let us go through the terminology of a public cloud private cloud and hybrid cloud guys okay yes so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching